Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today we're going to show you how to create master detail tables on a JSF page using our data controls. Before we make our master detail, 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 detail page, I just want to confirm that on our data controls that we have that parent-child relationship set up. So we have regions, countries, locations. Go ahead and create a new JSF page. Okay, and here is our blank page. So now we want to go to our data control. We can pull this up a little bit. And so make sure you grab the detail, which is countries. We drag this on here and we'll say master detail. And let's do a table table. After this is dragged onto the page, we'll take a look at what causes the detail to automatically update. Okay, and here is the page that's, that was created. And you'll see up here, this is a panel header. We can actually go into the structure and we can make some modifications. You'll see here in our panel group layout, we have the panel header here. If you want to rename it, you can. Instead of saying regions view one, we'll just make it say regions. And then for down here, we'll just make this say countries. And of course, we're going to run our page just so you can see that it's working and then we'll add more view objects. Okay, so let's go into our project here and just right click on your JSP page and run it. Okay, so here are regions up here and uh, once you click on any of these regions you'll see that the children down here actually change. We'll cover in another segment how to nicely lay out your tables um, so you don't have to do all that scrolling. Um, but check out the functionality here. I click on Asia, I get my Asian countries. I click on Americas and so on. To make this a little bit easier to look at, I'm going to make sure that these guys are next to each other. So I can go in here and I just go to the structure window, uh, make sure that I click on my regions right here and here's my structure. Make sure we click on our panel group layout and for the layout we're going to say horizontal. And you'll see how this changes a little bit. You'll see that once I click on horizontal that they are now next to each other. Looks a little bit nicer. And let's check out what's causing the partial page rendering. In other words, when we click, we don't have to hit a submit button. It automatically does a partial submit for us. So drilling down to our master table, you'll see that the ID for this master table is MD1. In fact, you can see it right here. And when you look at the detail right here, here's our detail table. And I want you to pay special attention when you scroll down, go to the behavior section, um, you'll see here that the partial triggers mentions MD1. Now that colon colon, whenever you see these colons here, it just means that you're breaking out of a nested uh, container. So um, you don't have to worry too much about formulating those colons. The best way to do that is just to go to edit and uh, choose the thing that you want, choose the component that you want to have uh, as the uh, master. And you'll see that just by dragging this over here, um, You'll see that all you have to do is drag it over like that and it creates it for you with the appropriate colons. Okay, so what do we need to do to add yet another child? Well, let's go ahead and set up the structure. I'm going to add another panel group layout. So uh, you'll see that if I just right click on this form, I can insert inside of and then choose it from here. So here's a panel group layout and you'll see it went right down there. And let's also make this one horizontal. And inside of here, then we can drag in here or we can insert a panel header just so it has a consistent look and feel. So here's my ADF faces. Here's my panel header. And what we're interested in putting in there is the location because remember we already have the regions and countries. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure this says uh, locations. And now we can look at our data control palette. Drill down here. Here's our locations. And I can just drag this right into here. And I'll say, you know what, I'm going to create a, I'll just make this a read-only table. And I'll include all of these elements. Make sure that you allow row selection uh, because then that way you can then have another detail for that. And since we want this to be responding to the selection of our other table, um, in other words, the first child table, what we want to do is go in here 
and we're going to scroll down till we get to the partial triggers. Let's see, where is it here? Here it is. Okay, partial triggers. Just click on this button right here. We'll hit edit and let's find our table. Okay, so when we drill in here, there's a table that we want it to respond to and now we're good to go. Let's test this. We're going to go into our projects right here and we're going to run it again. This time it won't take nearly as long to run. And here we have it. So let's test this out. Here's our Americas. I'm going to click on the United States. There we go. We click on Canada. So we have this master detail detail. Let's add one more layer. Okay, so all we need to do is go in here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Here's our panel group layout and I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to add another panel header. And this time instead of locations we're going to say departments. So the text will be departments and then we can scroll down here actually there's our locations let's find our departments there it is right here and we're going to drag it right onto here make this a read-only table allow for row selection and sorting okay now we're going to drill down into here and make sure that we have the partial triggers set up properly. So uh, here's our partial triggers right here. And have it point to its direct parent. Okay, so right in here is the table. And let's do one more layer. So we're still looking at our structure right in here. I'm going to add just a panel header below the panel group layout. So let me just insert right in here a panel header and let's give this a meaningful title this time this will be for the employees whoops here we go It'd help if I spell employees correctly <laughs> okay here we go and now we drill down into our employees and we can drag it right on top of here. Once again read only table. Since this is the very last child we don't even have to worry about row selection. Uh, we can always add that later if we wanted to uh, do something meaningful with it. And one last step and that is to have it point to the correct ID. And as I mentioned if you want to rename your IDs you can do that. Just make sure that if you have anything referencing it that you change that as well. So for example this table right here that was the, the for the departments I might call that something else such as uh, DEPT. Okay and so then in here when I'm referencing it I can then go in here and say ah okay well where is it? There it is and pull that over. Okay, so I'm going to save this and then rerun my page and you'll see that everything is working just right. And then we'll grab the United States and scroll down a little bit. You'll see down here uh, we can go ahead and uh, grab one of these. Let's see if there are any uh, children. Here we go. We have uh, different children in here. Some of these here. Oh yeah, quite a few children right in here. And then when we click on uh, different elements. Some of these have children. Okay. So just to wrap up what we learned here, you can create a master detail relationship using PPR with your data controls. And the one important thing that you need to remember is that when you're in JDeveloper, you need to drill down to the child or the detail and make sure, like for example in this one, make sure in your property inspector that you set the partial triggers to the master table. So you'll see here that partial triggers is colon colon department and it just goes right up the chain. Thank you for viewing. I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training.